In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Well, it is a great joy to be with you this morning. Back home, in a real sense. For those of you who I have never met, my name is Father Steve Petroff. I'm a Paulist father. Um, St. Patrick was my first assignment when I was ordained in 20. 17, and I've been away for, I think, three years now. I'm the rector of the Catholic American Parish in Rome, St. Patrick's San Patrizio, and uh, doing my uh, summer vacations here in Michigan, which is where I'm from, and uh, so as I said, very, very happy to be here with you. So as we prepare to celebrate these joyful mysteries, these mysteries of life, we call to mind our sins. We call to mind those moments when we have not recognized Christ in those around us or within our very selves. And with great confidence, we ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have forgiven us. You have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Hear what the Lord says. Arise, present your plea before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, O mountain, the plea of the Lord. Pay attention, O foundations of earth. For the Lord has a plea against his people, and he enters into trial with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you, or how I have wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt, from the place of slavery I released you. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miramah. With what shall I come before the Lord, and bow before God Most High? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of year old? Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand rams, with myriad of streams of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my crime, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? You have been told, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you, only to do the right and to love goodness and to walk humbly with God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Gather my faithful ones before me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out of your fold. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. 
Why do you recite my statutes and promote my covenant with your mouth? Though you, you hate discipline and cast my words behind you. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to you? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before our eyes. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to him that goes the right away, I will show the salvation of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Some of the scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. He said to them in reply, An evil and unfaithful generation seeks a sign. No sign will be given it, except the sign of Jonah the prophet. Just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it because they repented, because they repented in, at the preaching of Jonah. And there is something greater than Jonah here. At the judgment, the queen of the south will arise with this generation and condemn it because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You have been told what is good, and what the Lord requires of you, only to, to, to do the right and to love goodness and to walk humbly with your God. I feel like I have to do a little confession because I know you all so well. I've been struggling quite a lot these last few months to compose homilies and write my weekly newsletter because when I look at the happenings of the world, the never-ending and growing gun violence here and our, I was going to say inability, but that's not correct, our unwillingness to do something about it. Of course, the war in Ukraine, which is affecting the people that I minister to in Rome quite acutely. Global warming, which marches right along, and we as a society appear to twiddle our thumbs. And it gets very difficult to, for me to compose a hopeful message because these things need to be pointed out. True. But hope is present. And it is my job, our job, to recognize that. And these simple words, these words of God spoken by the prophet Micah, do the right, love goodness, and walk humbly with your God. That's it. 
It's not as easy as it sounds. We all know that. But in the last week or so, spending time with my family in Michigan, reconnecting, reconnecting here, our beautiful celebration yesterday, and I realize the hope is alive and active in our lives and in our relationships. It's a great shot in the arm for me. And I think it will help me in the future to not be every Sunday talking about, oh, all these bad things, we have to do something. We do have to do something. Part of it is voting and all these active things. But also doing right, loving goodness, and walking humbly with God. As simple and Pollyanna as that sounds. When we do the right thing, when we say, speak, and act with love, we move toward goodness and relationship. These aren't little things. They're quite big. We see them in our families. Oftentimes we need them in our families, in our parishes, in our communities. This is our way to change the world doesn't happen overnight, but it does happen with God's grace, with our patience and our persistence. So I thank you for reminding me the importance, the reality of community, the power of community. I do think that is the secret, recognizing Christ's presence in us and in one another, to day by day, person by person, week by week, change the world. Now together let us stand and offer our prayers to our loving and attentive God. We pray for the church that she may always be responsive to the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst, caring for others, spreading Christ's message by our words and by our actions. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all government leaders that they work diligently and in a committed way for peace, for true justice, and for the well-being of those left behind. We pray to the Lord. For our weary planet that we find peace that refugees find safe haven, that the guns in sight end, and that our planet heals, we preach the Lord. We pray for all who are ill, especially any ill members of this parish community and of our families, that they find healing in Christ the Divine Physician, 
and in their families and friends, we pray to the Lord. And for all who have died, especially Jean Williams, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they find rest in the company of God, and that all who mourn them be comforted. We pray to the Lord. And for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, we bring you these, our needs, our hopes, and our dreams, in the sure and certain knowledge that you hear and respond to us always through the love of Christ, your Son. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Let the mystery of this one who come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my many sins. Praise, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, Accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that each has, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with St. Paul, St. Camillus de Lellis, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another some sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Are there any announcements? No. That's good. Thank you all for sharing this marvelous celebration with me. Um, I suppose I'll see you out there. there. There is a very important tradition of coffee and other sundries after Mass. Have a lovely summer, and God bless you all. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go forward to share the love of Christ with the world. Thanks be to God.